Hey there everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Today we will be talking about polarization of light. What is polarization of light? What does it mean? What is unpolarized light? What is a polarized light? So let's look at light as we know it. Light is an electromagnetic radiation where there's an electric field with a magnetic field. And the electric field and the magnetic field is always what? Perpendicular to each other. Okay? And not only this component exists, there is hundreds, thousands, infinite number of components of the electric field and magnetic field. They're always what? Perpendicular to each other. So if somebody comes here and look at the light coming towards them, what they will see is just like this. They will see components of electric field and magnetic field coming towards them as you are looking at it. So that actually, this light, if it comes like this with all the components of it, it's called unpolarized light. And unpolarized light comes from its own source, like the sun, or if you have um, a lamp, this lamp is spitting out light. The light that it spits out is known as unpolarized. Once the light starts interacting with objects, like reflects off objects, or goes into a material and reflects off uh, the inside of the surface of a material, it actually becomes polarized light. Okay? Now this process could be controlled, and we can control which, which component of the light we are going to polarize. So if we look, for example, at this light here, okay? We are going to focus on the electric field only. Okay, so the electric field, as you can see, is coming like this. And there is another electric field next to it with a different angle, because they are at a different angle like that here. And there is another one like this at a different angle. All right. So let's focus on the electric field. And the magnetic field does exactly the same performance. So this is the electric field, all of it. So, if we look at the electric field only, this is the unpolarized light. If it passes through a certain filter, and this filter could be your glasses, that your sunglasses, and that's how they are made, they are polarizers. So the light can come and we can control which components, we said we have almost infinite number of components, which components can survive once the light goes through the polarizer. So, if we can make the polarizer that only admits the horizontal component, so what, to, what comes out from this is just exactly a component that resembles this. So, this will be called a horizontally polarized light. If we want to get only that this is a polarizer, if we want only to get the vertical component coming out for the electric field, then we will have a vertically polarized light. So, a polarizer is an optical instrument that allows only one direction of the field, that is the electric field here, to pass. That's it. Okay, sometimes we put more than one polarizer in front of light. So, let's say we have the light coming like this, unpolarized, from the sun or uh, a light bulb and it goes through a polarizer and this polarizer only allows the light to go into vertically so it vertically polarizes the light okay and we put in the way or in the way of that polarized vertically light we put another polarizer and we make it horizontal so it only allows the horizontal components of the light to pass so there is unpolarized light going through a polarizer number one and it's going through a polarizer number two and as you can see they are crossed so this is vertically polarizing uh, filter or polarizer and this is horizontally polarizing polarizer but to distinguish between the two I know we call this polarizer, they said we should call the second one analyzer. So the first one is a polarizer, the second one is analyzer. 
if you switch them, like this one, this one comes here, and this one comes here, this one becomes an analyzer, and this one becomes a polarizer. So the first one is always a polarizer, the second one is an analyzer. So let's go back to our problem here. We have unpolarized light going through a filter or a polarizer that vertically polarizes the light. So the only one that survives is the ver vertical component. It goes through a horizontally uh, situated analyzer. What do you think is going to come out here? Well, look, this is vertical component. And this is horizontal. Nothing will come out. So when two polarizers are crossed, nothing passes through. If you have a pair of glasses, you can do this, actually, for, you know, let's say you're watching TV and you have a pair of glasses. You can put one horizontal, like a pair of glasses like this, and you can put the other one vertical to it. Or you can put the one horizontal and the other one slightly start turning it until it's totally vertical to the other one. And the, and the result is you will not be able to see the TV at all. So this is here the experiment, as you can see. Here is the same glass. This is uh, glasses, one of the lenses, and the other one is totally crossed with it. And you can see nothing behind that. Okay? All right. So let's have a couple of examples now. Now, let's look at the math of this in, a, in, a, in the form of example. Let's say we have unpolarized light coming this way. And this unpolarizer is falling on this polarizer. And this polarizer, I'm going to just say it's vertically polarizing uh, filter. Okay? So what's going to survive is only, as we know, what the vertical component of the light. Okay? And it's going to keep going until it falls onto the second polarizer or what we call the analyzer. So the mathematical uh, value of this one, if this one was I0, where I0 represents the original intensity of unpolarized light. So this is original intensity of unpolarized light. As it goes through a polarizer, only half of it survives. Half, half of it survives. Okay? So this intensity, even if it's one component only, the intensity of it is half of the original unpolarized light. If it goes through another analyzer, let's say this analyzer has an angle, like it's not crossed now, it's not crossed like this, but it's an angle, like, like this, angled. So this one is coming like this, so there is a theta angle, so this one here is coming uh, vertically polarized, and the analyzer has an angle, theta, with the vertically polarized light. So what survives here is one-half I naught cosine square theta. This is known as the malice, or the law of malice. So let's recap again. Let's say you have 100 watts here, okay? 100 watts per meters square. That's how we measure the intensity of light. Goes through a polarizer. Half I naught is equal to what? If this is 100, then 50 watts per meter square survive. Now let's say this angle here is 60 degrees, okay? So we use the Malice law to find what survives. Half I naught, we already found it. Half I naught, we already found it, which is 50. So that's 50 times cosine square 60. Cosine 60 is 1 half. Cosine square 60 is 1 over 4. 1 over 4 times 50 is 12.5 watts per meter square. Okay? Now, if you tilt this analyzer a little bit more so that it becomes horizontal like this. The angle becomes 90 degrees. Cosine 90 is zero and nothing survives. Now let's look at this example. In this example we have an unpolarized light as you can see falling to the right and its intensity is I0 equal to 200 uh, watts per meters square. It's falling on um, 
horizontal polarizer. There is another analyzer here and a second analyzer, as you can see. If this one does not exist, so let's say this one does not exist, okay? What's going to happen, you think? This light will be horizontally polarized, crossed with the vertically polarized, so zero here. So zero, we will have zero here. Nothing will actually survive. So let's go back to what's going to happen here. If we have 200 watts going on uh, a horizontally polarizer, then we know the first thing that survives from a polarizer is half the, the original quantity that is going in. So what we will have here, 100 watts per meter square. So that's good. Now we need to know what, so this light is going to be horizontally polarized. If we knew, if we have this equation here, so I'm going to put here, so this is how this light is going to fall on this analyzer, and the angle here, I'm going to make it 30 degrees, or that will be given to you, okay? So what survives here would be what? 100 watt per meter square times cosine square 30, and if you use your calculation, survives here is 75 watts per meter square. Now this one, look, I, we know that this is horizontally coming in, but this is not totally crossed with it. So what survives now is something like this. Okay, so now it's going to fall on this second analyzer and it's going to be like that. If this is 30 degrees, this is what? 60 degrees. So what's going to survive here would be what? 75 times cosine squared 60. And cosine 60 is um, uh, 1 half squared at 1 over 4. 1 over 4, so 75, divide, 75 divided by 4. And that would be equal to... 18.75 watts per meter square. The falling light here is unpolarized, okay? And that's why we have to go the polarizer, analyzer, analyzer. If the falling light is polarized, then the first one is not called polarizer, it's gonna be called analyzer. Okay, let's have one final example. In this example, a polarized light now is falling, and this light is, uh, is polarized at an angle 40 degrees with the horizontal and its value is 120 watts per meter square. It's falling exactly on an analyzer now. This is called an analyzer because the light is already polarized, okay? And it's falling on there. Look, this is making 40 degrees with the horizontal and the analyzer also making 40 degrees with the horizontal. So the angle between this one and this one is zero. Using the, mal the law of malice, then 120, I'm going to say 120, times cosine squared 0. And cosine squ 0 is 1, square it is 1. So what survives here is 120 watts per meter square, as we should expect. Now this light that is coming like this, polarized with a 40 degrees angle here, is going to fall on this analyzer. And this analyzer makes a 40 degrees angle with the vertical. So let's analyze this. So this light is going to come this way. So I'm going to draw this like that. Okay. It makes 40 degrees here with the what? With the horizontal. So what's left here is 50 degrees. But the analyzer only lets light that is 40 degrees with the vertical. So 50 plus 40. So this whole thing is 90 degrees. Okay, so basically what's this telling us that this analyzer and this analyzer are crossed. When they are crossed, nothing survives. And we can use the, the law of malice again. So what we have here is 120 cosine squared 90 and cosine 90 is 0. So what survives is 0 watt per meter squared. And that's it for now, for this problem. Now, let's look at polarizer from another way, okay? Let's say this is Earth, and the sun is shining. 
we are going to answer the everlasting question is why is the sky blue okay so if you are here on earth and this is the atmosphere and you're looking at the sky directly like this you're going to see blue sky but if you're looking if you're looking sitting on the beach and the sun is sitting and you're going to be looking this way horizontally so you're going to see the red and if you look here you're going to see what the blue so what happens is that at the higher level in the atmosphere there are molecules when they absorb the sunlight they become more active and they start vibrating in all directions so at the higher energy levels they don't like that so they they want to come down to a lower energy level and the way they do that is by spitting out light so those molecules are going to spit the higher energy which is the blue down this way and they're going to spit the lower energy which is the red horizontally that's why when you look at the sky at the sunset you see red but if you look at the sky directly above you during the day you will see blue and that's why the sky is that's it for now thank you